Hey y'all, it's actually back. It's actually a back. It's actually a back. Back. Chat, it's been a long week. It's been a long Today we mourn. I'm wearing black. I'm mourning for the past week that I've had. Because it has been complete and total and utter trash. Complete, total, and utter trash. Hey y'all, it's Ashley at Bookish Room. And today we are going to do a reaction video. I haven't done a reaction video in a very, very long time. And I definitely wanted to do a, <laughs> wanted to do a reaction video. Now I stumbled across this list. Okay, this is Book Riot's best books of 2023 so far. I trust Book Riot with a lot of things because they have such a high amount of diverse content. They recommend a lot of diverse reads. Their book lists are phenomenal. And so I don't know why I've never seen their best book list before. This is different for me. I granted, should I have done this last month? Absolutely. But I just stumbled across it this this week. And so I was like, oh, this will be a fun one to react to. So this is their best books of 2023. I don't know when they published this because it doesn't appear to have a date attached to it, which I wish I could give you a better framework of, a, of an, a date that was attached to this, but they only considered materials that were published between January 1st and June 30th. Now, I am going to, of course, share my screen with y'all so that you can see exactly what I'm looking at so that y'all are not confused about what is going on. So, as you can see on the left side of the screen they have a lot of different categories um they have everything from historical romance mermaid transformations lots i haven't seen this list by the way lots of queer stories comedic horror pirate adventures hard horror and more and uh we love them all and we hope you will too happy reading so i'm guessing what they have here is they picked i don't know if they picked multiple books from multiple genres or like what they decided to do but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I am not going to go through every single book in this list simply because I am not well versed in every genre and so I don't really think that my feedback is going to be relevant for some of these like for example I read fantasy but I'm not a huge fantasy reader so I probably will not cover that one I don't read a lot of horror. I probably will look at the mystery thriller, nonfiction, not poetry because I can't tell you the last time I picked up a poetry collection. I read books written in verse, but I can't tell you the last time I picked up poetry and I probably won't do science fiction. But I will click on the genres that I think I basically kind of connect to the most. And what I'll do is if there's a genre that I don't cover that you're interested in, you can look at it. Now, I do think it's interesting that children's and young adult are considered genres. Age categories, y'all. Age categories, please. I just, I, I can't, I don't, I can't, I can't. I just can't with children and young adult being genres. But let's go ahead and click on the children's. Okay, so, okay, so I guess it's a full list that they, that they went with. So this full list, you can skip to see what selection they chose and for the children's they went with once upon a book by grace lynn and kate messner i actually have read this book it is a picture book grace lynn and kate messner are both like when i say big names in the children's book world they are big names i have read both like some of both of their works and I did, like I said, get the opportunity to read this. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture book in which the main character is, it's, she's stepping into the pages of the book. And it's very, it's very interesting because it illustrates how kids can get lost within the pages of a book. The artwork in this was really, really good. And she has a dress like they noted here. I'm glad that they made this notation. They said Alice's dress of words from the classic inspiration uh, which uh, alter to match the plot. I like I'm glad that they mentioned that because her dress does definitely um, does change to match the plot of the book and it's really 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 cool because she's essentially trying to find the perfect place and she goes through all of these things. It's almost like your quest to find your your perfect book and it definitely has parallels to Alice in Wonderland which they do mention I think 
let me look here really really quick much like Alice and Allison yeah 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 so they they do um they do make that correlation now would I say that this is the best picture book and see this is why it's so interesting because children's is such a broad spectrum so in this we're kind of leaving out board books that have been published level readers chapter books middle grade uh, books that would all be housed under children's so i'm wondering how they kind of made the decisions on what book to pick for this category because even in terms of picture books i don't know if i would necessarily say that this is the best picture book that i've read this year i just this week i read a picture book that would have been published before I'm pretty sure it would have been published before June 30th, but I will double check to make sure that I am not bugging. Yeah, it was published in April and it's last flight. I'll put a picture up so you can see it. This was a five star picture book for me. I loved this picture book and I would rate that one higher than Once Upon a Book, but I can understand why they chose this one. Uh, two heavy hitters attached to it. Gracelyn, Kate Messner, I mean the book was, it was beautifully done. I wouldn't consider it to be the best picture book that was, um, that was published so far this year, but it's, it's not a, it's not a bad selection. All right, let's go to the fiction category. I actually have not read either one of these books, but one of them is on my TBR. Oh wait, so it's a whole section. Okay, so the first one is Any Other City by Hazel Jane Plant, 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 Tay. I don't want to mess up their last name. I, it's trans. This book is messy, uncontainable, untranslatable, trans brilliance. So I am actually, I've never seen that title at all. I'm not familiar with that one, so I can't comment on it. Chain Gang All Stars is one that I do have on my TBR. I actually have the audiobook for this one on my Libro FM account, and I heard that it is it is a tough one. And I think Erica, Erica from the Broken Spine, I believe that she mentioned that she had started reading this one and it was a it was a rough read. <laughs> She, she mentioned that it was a rough read so with me having read like I just finished up the bluest eye a couple maybe last week not a couple weeks I just finished up the bluest eye last week I'm not itching right now to pick up another intense book but I have heard good things about Chain Gang All-Stars now this is one also that's on my TBR Dust Child by Nguyen Fan Kwai Mai I read her other book which is not coming to me now. Why is it not The Mountain Sing? Goodness gracious, I was like, why is this not? I Did I read The Mountain Sing this year? I feel like I read The Mountain Sing this year. I feel like this year has been a blur, but I'm pretty sure I read The Mountain Sing this year, and I thought that Nguyen Fen Kwai Mai's writing was exceptional, and if I am pronouncing her name wrong, please correct me, but I, I absolutely loved the mountain sing beautiful writing storytelling tough look at the impact of the vietnam war and dust child is also a book that looks at the vietnam war but more so like the aftermath of the vietnam war and so i definitely that is those two are on my tbr i just have not gotten to them yet this year but i will especially and does child is high up on the list for me because i adored the mountain sing so much okay the next category that i will go to let's do mystery thriller because i've been reading some mystery thrillers but of course naturally the first thing that pops up is a book that i haven't read um the mimicking of known successes which is the first book in the mosa and Politi paletti uh, this is a mix of mystery thriller and science fiction. That's interesting. I didn't even really think of that. This is a, I guess, like it's a whodunit set on Jupiter. You know, I always think sometimes I've had such bad experiences with lists that it's always fascinating when I go into one and I'm like, is my TBR about to get a little bit bigger? I think my TBR is is about to get longer that actually sounds really interesting 
And then of course the next one that they have up here is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Satanto. I have been dying to read Dial A for Aunties for the longest time, but I haven't gotten to it yet. I haven't heard much about this. I haven't heard much reviews on the back end about this one yet. I know that a lot of people are, friend, are fans of Jesse's works, but I haven't heard much about this one. I probably would go for Dial for Aunt for um, Dial A for Aunties first before I dive into this, but I have seen this title and I'm familiar with it. And then, of course, the last one that we have on this list is Yellow Face by R. F. Kwong. I, I did read this one. It is one of my favorite books of the year. A very, very, very polarizing book. I believe that I talked about this one a lot more in my my best and worst books of July. So if you're interested in my more in-depth thoughts about Yellow Face, I definitely recommend checking out that uh, video. But I adored it. And like I said, very, very polarizing type of book because I have friends who loved it and I have friends who did not enjoy it. And it's definitely one of those books that is it's unhinged and unhinged I think with purpose but it all depends upon who you talk to and whether people like it or not so it's like a red one in that category that I really enjoyed. Alright so the next section that I am going to go to we're going to do romance which this is bound to have some things that I'm not super familiar with. I don't read a lot of traditionally published romance so there's that. So this one is a historical harlequin but guiling her enemy warrior and I feel like I've seen someone read this or mention it somewhere but it's probably I probably would not pick this one up it's just not my speed it's, it's just not for me it's a viking romance I, not gonna lie to y'all I, I have no interest in that whatsoever Next is Bitter Medicine by Mia Mia Tsai Say. This is a fantasy romance and it's a main character who's a descendant of a Chinese god of medicine. Fantasy romance is just in its bag right now. I think that TikTok has really pushed the subgenre of fantasy romance and I'm not mad at it. I just haven't found a fantasy romance that I've fallen in love with yet and so you know there's that but this one does look in interesting uh, it does look very very interesting but I've never seen it I that one's that one I've never seen and the last one is Chef Choice which of course I've heard about the author's first book Chef's Kiss and this one is a, I guess, companion told from the perspective of a different character. I own Chef's Kiss. I just have not read it yet. But I know that there are some feelings about Chef's Kiss, if I'm not mistaken, unless I'm thinking of a different book. But I feel like there are some feelings about Chef's Kiss, but I'm still interested in picking it up. I'm not surprised that this one is on here. I think that a lot of people enjoy Chef's Kiss, and so naturally people are moving into Chef's Choice, and I would not be surprised if they also think highly of that. I like that. Let me, I'm gonna point this one thing out. I will say this. One thing that I absolutely adore and love is that Book Riot is great for always diversifying whatever selections they make. Even if I've never heard of the book, even if I don't necessarily agree with the choice, even with the sections and categories that I've already gone through, they're already highlighting and showcasing their diversity, right? They're already illustrating that they're gonna have balance options for every category. Whereas when we start getting into other lists, I always find that there is a lack of diversity in the choices. A lot of times the books that are chosen are books that are simply mainstream popular, which there's nothing wrong with reading a mainstream popular book, but I also feel like there are fair contenders that may not have gotten as much shine. And so it's nice to look at these lists and see balance, whether I agree with it or not. Like they are very intentional about how they develop their list, which is why I like Book Riot so much. All right, so let's go to the last section which is young adult crossing the line 
which is a poetry collection. Why is, is there, like, listen, it's my job to be very familiar with, with, especially with children's and young adults. There's stuff that I feel like I should be familiar with and Crossing, I've never heard of that one. That's interesting, but it is a YA novel written in verse and it is about a character who is struggling with the death of his dad and the second one that they ended up adding um emojin obviously by becky apatali does not surprise me it does not surprise me whatsoever um of course this is going to have some queer representation i think that the i think that the main character is by if I'm not mistaken or there is a character in here that is by and then there is um queer Jewish main characters which is always great to see now I haven't read Emojin obviously I haven't read I think I've only read one book by Becky Abertali and it, it's not a dislike or anything like that I just haven't prioritized reading a lot of um her backlist now in terms of why a book that I have read this year that I think would be fair contenders for this oh goodness gracious it's kind of I'm trying to think and I'm going I'm actually scrolling through my goodreads if you think oh she's just looking down scrolling over now I'm actually looking at my goodreads because I'm trying to think if if there has been a why a book well Joy Goffney's new book my week with him was a five star read for me, which I think is an absolute fair contender. I think that that one was exceptional, but I'm also slightly biased towards Joya Goffney. <laughs> not, I'm not slightly biased. I'm extremely biased towards Joya Goffney and it, it just kind of is what it is at, the, at this point that I'm, that I'm biased for. But I do think that that one could possibly be a a fair contender I, I really do think that it would be a fair contender I'm not sure that I have anything else because all of the YA books I've read this year have been good the the closest one that I think I would get to that in terms of new releases because we're not doing backlist here they're doing all new releases the closest I would get to that would probably be promise boys by Nick Brooks that was a well promise by promise boys by Nick Brooks for me would be a fair contender I think that 16 and pregnant by Lala Thomas was a surprisingly great book I it's MTV books I'm not gonna lie to you I'm not gonna sit here and say like oh I thought that MTV books was you know <laughs> it's gonna hurt right I did not think that they were gonna come up with such a good uh, great book but 16 and pregnant was really really good and then um, highly suspicious and unfairly cute was also a great release Talia Hibbert's first YA release so I think if I'm thinking about five star young adult books that I've read that were 2023 releases I think I would choose those as also fair game for being at the top of the list I've read more than that in terms of YA 2023 releases but not anything you know five star that necessarily would be worthy to be on this list all right y'all so that is the book riot best books of 2023 now keep in mind I did not cover poetry nonfiction, or horror because those are not my strong it well nonfiction usually is but I have not read <laughs> I have not read enough 2023 nonfiction this year to even think that I would know much of what would be considered you know a, a best book of 2023 and I don't I typically do not read poetry at all so there's that I mean unless it's a book written in verse and then science fiction also is not a strong area for me but I mean I think it's a fair list it has lots of lots of variety lots of diversity and so this is one of the better lists that I've seen of course it's one of the better <laughs> it's one of the better lists that I have seen 
which I'm not surprised because it's book right. They typically do it for me, so there's that. Let me know in the comments below if there were any books that I went over that you have read or if you think that there are some other books that are good contenders for this list let me know in the comments down below as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications if you're interested in following me on social media or supporting me via patreon and all of that those will be down in the description box below as well and i'll be back with another video soon i'm on my own broken alone i feel the rain crashing down all